have to brag. I'm pretty good at what I do. Uh, you seem like it. Yeah, you thank you. Really I appreciate that. It. I like you a lot, too. Thank you. Something about your energy. I don't know. Yeah, yours, too. It's really great. Um, fantastic. Three of you, at some point, to step forward and take my hand and speak to her. I'm I'm a stranger to her. You mean to take my hand? Possibly, yeah. Oh, well, I'll wait till wait, later. Wait, wait, wait till I cue you. Okay. Vladna, wherever you are, come back to us. Come back to your family. And without breaking eye contact with whatever distant space she's focused on, she reaches a hand out to whoever will take it. Please. May I? Yeah. Vladna, I know I don't know you any better than the rest of the gang, but I know your history. You deserve to be more than a footnote in Delilah's story. There are people here who need you. They need your life and your heart. I don't know what Bell's Hells will be without your darkness, Lodna, or your light. We don't want to leave anyone behind, least of all you. We gotta get that blood flowing through your veins again. Please, come back. He sort of scooches forward on his knees and he starts trailing his hand down through Lodna's hair and Red poppies start to bloom all through her black hair. Eleven. Okay. Eleven. Okay. okay. The threshold was ten. Uh-huh. So I'll stay by her side, holding okay. Miss Trickfoot's hand. Pank puts her other arm out, waiting for somebody else to step forward. Uh, with my other hand uh, gripping my my that coin, uh, mm-hmm. I will take her hand, and I'll just whisper to her, uh, Lodna, you might not have been, you know, perfect, but you loved escargot and sashimi, and you loved Imogen. I've always been told that a soul that loves at least touches perfection. You once said to me that the worst thing that ever happened to you has already happened. Now I can say that the worst thing that ever has happened to us has already happened. With you not here, it's really scary and not the fun kind. Pike said that you might not want to come back, so I'm afraid we can't let you do that. So I'm gonna cast Compulsion. Natural one. Yeah. Yeah. You feel the magical energies just sort of scatter like a like a breath into the wind. You know you saved my life, right? If you hadn't come into town when you did, I don't know how long I would have lasted. These last few years have been, they've been everything. And through it all, through all the laughter and all the hardships, she was with you. She was choking you. If you come back, I don't know how you're gonna feel. I don't know if you'll feel free or if you'll feel empty. But I want you to know whatever, whatever hole she's leaving, I'll be there to help fill it, all right? I'll be there for you. I'm not gonna tell you to come back. I'm not gonna try to compel you to come back because that choice, Laudna, is yours now. No one gets to control you anymore. Just know that I love you and I'm here. And I'm gonna take pate and I'm gonna Put him on her chest. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nope. What's it's, the total? Um, it's a seven. It's challenging, given the fact that this is a soul that is still bound to shadow. Shadow that now is vengeful, as diminished as it may be, and is still in some ways holding your voices back from finding the ears that needs to hear them. But with that final call, you watch as Pike's hair begins to drift upward past her shoulders and kind of undulating, floating in the air. She begins to carry herself up off the ground and begin to lift an inch, two inches, three inches off the ground, legs still folded in front of her, and you watch as all the sigils <laughs> light up from underneath. Laudna's dark hair, as it kind of hangs off her shoulders, begins to lift up as well. And as Pike leans forward and places her hand once more on her chest, all the glyphs at once, a light, and then go dark as they both drift back to the ground. Cannot find my usual resurrection dice. I thought it was here. I use this one. Black, purple, most laudinous colors. Seems fitting. Yeah. Seems fitting. Oh, no. I'm so stressed. I got a nose bleeding. Oh, oh no. my god. A moment passes. In that stillness, you hear Pike exhale and under her breath say once more, Come on. Places her hand over the front of her mouth, her nose. Is she a real shallow breather? Oh, she she doesn't breathe at all, most of the time. She licks her hand and slaps the side of Laudna's face, of which immediately Laudna sits up, jolted awake from the pain. Laudna, if you come back to the table, please. What did you roll? 
16. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what was the DC after two failed? Oh, man. Well, it was 12 initially, went down to nine, and then it went to 10 to 11. That was so <laughs> gnarly. What did you roll? What did you 16. roll? 16. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was stressful. Nice. Time to rise. You know, like a, no big. Time to rise oh like god. a dark phoenix. <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh, 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 never fuck again. Oh my god. I don't want to bleed on you. I got a nose <laughs> Hey, but poor, those Mickey Mouse hands are messing me up, dude. They're messing me up. <laughs> oh, 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 boy, touch me. Lord, are you back? Are you back? Are you okay? Is it you? Say something only louder and out quick! Have you found anything else out about your mom? Oh. Oh. Fuck. I'm so glad you're back. Um, do you remember anything? I do. I remember hearing you, and I remember seeing you. Seeing all of you. I remember all of it. Is she gone? Is she gone? You don't know. <laughs> what, 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 what thoughts do FCG glean from just a passing <clears throat> view of your mind? I imagine it almost reads like a flip book of all the memories that she was just reliving and going through. Confusion, terror, frustration, elements of regression, a little lost. Do you need to sit down? Do you, do you need water? There's a lot of water here. Like Lady Vexalia is at the door with this dark green bow covered in these arced, twisted bits of <coughs> wood and vine, an arrow knocked in it, Ooh. aimed right at Ladna. Who are you? I think the more appropriate question is, who are you? I mean this with all due respect. Do not move. The moment you do anything strange or untoward, this goes between your eyes. And she pulls the arrow back taut, and as she does, you can <coughs> see these small, thin brambles kind of spiral out of the arrow's wood and prepare itself. This is just extremely pointed, jagged element that's just aiming straight for you. Hi, I'm Hi, Trickfoot. I just need to check something real fast. You trust me? No. She's trustworthy. She's, she's good. She's real good. Shh, shh. Places her hand in front of you, and that same kind of warm energy seems to draw this tether between the two of them for a moment. Okay, no, she's, uh, it's definitely her. Her, her, Laudna, her? Laudna, yes, yeah, sorry, I should have specified. <laughs> That's on me. Sorry, it's Laudna. Just Laudna. <laughs> Big Sully, I kind of like. The bow goes slack. Shink! Oh, oh, I had to pull him back in, but it hurts. Orm is still. Orm is still. What is that bow made of? Oh, we know. Stuff of the gods, all that business. Well, Lodna, welcome back. Uh, my name is Lady Vixalia Dorolo. Um, Where are we? We're in what's well time. Oh. Is that a, it's, it's okay, it's okay. It's, it, it's not like it was. It's not like it was. It's very different now. Or well, you should catch her up. She's obviously missing some pieces. A lot has happened. It was the best chance we had of bringing you back. Why would you bring me back here? So we wouldn't lose you, Lana. Yeah. We have to stay. We had nowhere else to go, Lana. I'm sorry. You got nothing to be sorry for. I'm sorry. For everything you all went through, you didn't have to do that. You're right. We should just we should have just left you for dead and just gone on checking out the moon. A terrible inconvenient. How long? How long has it been? Years. Oh God! What happened to the solstice? I'm sorry. This is all that's left. Just us. So I survived. It's just, yeah, just days. us. These oh, fine God. people here are going to help us recreate society. I'm so confused. The one with the bows with me. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the bow <laughs> tensing <laughs> once more. Okay, okay. Be careful. You're in the presence of a lady. It's been a couple of days. Get you out of here. All right. And we're gonna get back to business. If you want, you can just close your eyes the whole time we're here. You don't have to look at anything. But it is quite lovely outside now. I, we saw what it might have looked like for you. The place is healed. So have you. Maybe I'd like to see it. Just a, just a little. Is that all right? All right, boys, stand down. In the two corners of the room, you see two figures step out of invisibility, mm. and you see two armored, masked members of the wow. Rifleman Corps. Dope. Shit. Weapons at the ready. Lower them. Like Terran ghosts. Very good. Also, I don't know if we made the proper introductions. Fight Trickfoot, and then that's Lady Vexalia Durolo. 
Do I have any recognition yeah, of who she is? is Not really, unfortunately. <gasps> Just up, dead. You were, you were... <laughs> Intelligence of six. <laughs> <laughs> know what I'm doing. <laughs> For the time being, you're our guests. You're very pretty. So are you. <laughs> you scattered pale guard and rifle core kind of taking steps back, weapons down at the ready, but still some of them intense looks, some of them curious, some of them are young. The first thing you see, Laga, is color. You see a light gray sky with broken bits of sky blue, vibrant rooftop, fresh shingles, gardens and flower bushes set at the base of windows. You see a well-kept cobblestone roadway. You hear people laughing in the distance and talking. Whitestone, as you remembered it, and even brighter, the memories you've held of this place for so long, it's decaying, corrupted, beaten form. The last memory you had of your home fade. Instead, now, recalling your youth. You remember running up these streets, excitedly meeting your elders as they set up shop, sneaking in to listen to Kiprian and Sermon. You remember trying to sneak into folks' yards and being caught and sent back to your parents with a stern talking to. All these positive memories return to you, which after who knows how long of reliving the traumas, you can't help but breathe cleaner air in the moment. And the thing that catches your attention behind this crowd is the towering, vibrant, bright, green and yellow leaves of the sun tree in full display, healthy as it's ever been, turning into the autumn colors. I pull Pate out and take the sinewy strings and kind of collapse them down on itself on top of him, pull him apart, and cast Find Familiar. Yes. What? And just, like releasing a dove, just... It falls dead. See what happens. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, and I... <sighs> Can it fly? So the lifeless, headless body of a rat affixed to a skull <laughs> tumbles into the air, the strings kind of stretching and breaking, and it arcs downward before the back tears open in what looks to be a pair of awful looking tattered wings that emerge from the back. Like his rib cage is now yeah, his like, wings. Like, oh, oh my god, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The back Orphan maker. As it flies <laughs> up, <laughs> seemingly held aloft by some unseen necromantic powers, as it kind of just hangs there limply, it's the wings kind of <laughs> You've not, not seen this sort of puppeteering before, the head kind of <laughs> looks up towards the rescue before it goes, Oh, hello! Oh, it's so nice to meet all of you! Oh, it's real! Right. You can hear him too! You can, oh, you can, you can hear him! Yeah, absolutely! I goes, wow, that's really creepy! Huh. I'm gonna go! Bye! Bye! <laughs> Thank you! Kip, we are definitely posting up at Laudan's door. I'll take the first watch, you take second, and you're number three. Number three! Shh! <laughs> oh! Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> um, hope everyone likes potatoes. I love them. They're my favorite food. Wonderful. Sure. Yeah, I love potatoes are really? so good. Especially as a main course. Yeah. <laughs> They're fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> In subject. <laughs> uh, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love Perfect. potatoes. Right. Right. Down. Potatoes. Enjoy their after Lord Percival returns a small box. I made this for my children when they were much younger. Um, I think this might do for what you're looking for. Now, I know not how you train your monkey, but I would recommend not aiming at anybody's face or head. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. For sure. How do you train your monkey? <laughs> He kind of does what he wants. <laughs> he hesitates. <laughs> <laughs> and he like ducks as like one of the small saucers goes over his head and shatters the wall behind. His mister's like, <laughs> uh, Mister, come, come here, come here, come here. Curls back up under your shoulder. Fucking eyes are crazy. Bro. I know. <laughs> 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 I can't tell if you're looking at me or I know. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. It's essentially a small, simple tube, a trap door that kind of pulls open. 
like a, like a small version of a potato gun. Um, you know, shows you kind of how to load it with just a little bit of black powder. Just a little just bit. A little bit. <laughs> Three grains. Yeah. Scatter shot of shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of what it'll do. Oh my god. <laughs> this is primarily like, like a, a teenager's toy. Don't put any actual ammunition in it beyond your monkey's excrement. Okay. One time to put in some black powder, that would be okay. It's your lesson to learn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very, very much. So I encountered this. Um, on the black market in Amman some time ago. It's the residual. And more recently, came across it in um, Basras in Marquette, connected to the Cerberus Assembly in Wildmount. And I have to imagine that is not your intended destination. Kind of picks up and runs the powdered residual glass through his fingers. It was one of two interesting materials that they were smuggling. Pull out the other potion. He looks over to Vexali and she takes up the potion and kind of begins to look it over. We've um, been aware of some missing shipments for some time. Been trying to pinpoint as to where they were going and who was involved, and the care that was taken to keep them enshrouded was extensive. Now I've been following some personal threads that were leading us eastward, believed to have some sort of Dwendalian and or Wildmount involvement. And the assembly, of course, had crossed my mind, but that is a truth I'd been hoping would not be the case, as they are a very messy organization to confront. Definitely seen signs that it's the case. What do you know about the Apogee Solstice? I know quite a bit I've read about solstices. The Apogee Solstice, and it's once in a lifetime, at least a human lifetime. It, most currents tends to draw out the best and the worst of Xandrian society. Anyone with a, an interest in cheating their way to a better position through magical means is going to be out on those nights doing their best and their damnedest to achieve things normally unheard of or incapable. That's what they're working towards. They're working alongside Odahan Thul and the Unseelie Court. Am I right? We've been looking into Rudis and the powers it can bestow, potentially. We were able to gaze upon the moon with a, a, a special telescope, and Orm and I both, both witnessed a lattice, a magical lattice, wrapped around the red moon. Trapped within it, we saw a city. I begin sketching out rapidly on the table, just like something that almost looks like a kaleidoscope, a, a fractal pattern within the lattice that uh, progresses and continues around, and it does indeed look similar to the one that you saw. Is this what you saw? Yeah, very similar. Have you seen, how do you know? We've seen it ourselves with our own eyes, though not on the moon. This is the design of the Divine Gate. Is there only one Divine Gate or several, or? As far as I know, it, it's, it's one continuous barrier, a boundary that exists between, but it only exists in these spaces between dimensions and only exists around Exandria. Around Ruidus. We've also, Learned texts exist from long ago that describe gods from the beginning, two of them. But there are people out there who are stopping at nothing to make sure that whatever is up there is not found out. And those people are tied up in this, pointing at the residual. Many across uh, the entire world are constantly trying to steal this out from under us. You'll excuse me if it brings a bit more context as to our slightly paranoid nature here in the city. Does Dorolo seem skeptical, peaked? He seems interested, but his mind is... <laughs> okay. Oh, like a clock tower? Is this what this is? <laughs> wow. I can't believe that actually. <laughs> okay. That's really fun. Really fun, yeah. <laughs> I want one of those. I want one, I know. I get the little, I get the little. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Is Lady DeRose still here? She's over with the hookah with Chet. Fuck it, moon. A lot of people who have poked at this mystery have ended up dead. 
divine gate that you're talking about, is there a, an entrance and an exit? Beings of a less grandiose divine nature can pass through it, for the most part, without issue. It's mainly designed to keep the gods themselves from passing into our realm. Yeah, it's like, it's because like, Exand Exandria's here, it's probably like over us. Right? It's more around. It's more. It's around no, the it's entire. That's like this, and then that's between us, and then they're up there. I have to figure out a way to get you drunk at some point. That's really important. She just understand. Maybe one day, my friend Terry can have a look at you, fix what's mixing up those that gears. Sounds, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> sounds fun. <laughs> that clock tower is impressive. I believe Lady Dorella said you were the architect. the architect of it. Yes. yes How long did that take you? Good number of years. It was a personal project of mine. Yes, a very fine piece of work. My compliments. Thank you kindly. Mixalia? I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'll stay behind a moment if you don't mind. All right? He nods and leaves the chamber. <sighs> Finally alone. <laughs> <laughs> With our thoughts. This one's adorable. Mm. All right. Specifically to you. I'm so very sorry. Why are you sorry? Because I can't help but feel a bit responsible for what happened to you, and I'm just sorry. You remind me of the, the ladies that I used to emulate when I was a little girl. Your hair, it's so pretty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she reaches down and grabs her hand for a moment and goes, you need to take care of yourself. You all need to take care of each other, and you all need to take care of her. And this has brought me some help and protection in the past, and hope maybe this can do the same for you. She pulls a small band off of her finger and hands it out to you. To me. Can't tell with your eyes. What is it? It's a, um, a ring that contains a protective enchantment. I've had it for quite some time. Thank you, lady. Hey, welcome back. It's good to be back. Warren's been doing crunches for 20 minutes with his feet <laughs> tucked under a root. Uh, oh. <laughs> nope. Oh, it was so bad for my back. I don't think I can walk. You're going to have to go off without me. Can you make me oh, oh, God. All right, All right. We're just, we just pull real hard. All right. Let's just pull. I'll it's pull gone. super hard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed. Right as rain. Oh, Thanks, I'm going to knock on the sun tree. Open up a door. What? Just open up. Do you have speak with plants? <laughs> <laughs> what level is that? Hmm? What level is that? Speak with plants is like one or two. It's a low level. You don't have it. Hello. No. <laughs> if you if you wanted to, you could have set it as one of your spells overnight while you were sleeping, since you just woke up. Oh yeah. For fun and real This fun. is true. Do it. Up to you. Talk to that sun tree. Do it. Yeah, give me, the fun give thing, me a minute, of course, is that it means it means you can understand the sun tree. Oh, also, so Fern, are you doing this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is a question that is asked every session. <laughs> <laughs> are you really doing this? Let Matt I'm just be a getting plant. really close. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, I was just actually seeing if um, you could open. Open, open up your body, just like a like a door. Are you there? Are you? Can I talk to you? Hello. Are you just saying this, or are you actually yeah. using the spell? You're just saying it. No, You're using I, the spell. I, I'm using the spell. Sorry. Oh, you're using the spell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was always curious about. It. Okay. As you finish whispering, the a gentle breeze <laughs> blows through the boughs of the tree. More of the kind of golden. Amber leaves drift down, and a, a warm voice emanates from the tree that fills your mind and your heart. It says, Hey, Fern. Oh, hi. I mean, people make doors out of trees. We don't do it ourselves, but you figure it out. If I figure it out, I can you just You know do where it. I am. <laughs> Great. Wow, you're so just relaxed. Yeah. You too. How long have you been here? Long time. A long time. Mm. Come and go. I say the same. Oh, 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 o
Did you ever notice when they put up a new moon? No. As long as I've been here, there's been two. Oh. Are you excited for the Apogee Solstice? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess a little. It's interesting and makes me feel all tingly. Oh, that's pretty nice. We'll come back and, and talk to you at some point. I'll figure out how to get you open. You got consent from me. Oh, oh yes, I should have asked. Thank you, Suntree. Thank you very much. It was really nice to meet you and talk with you. Anytime, Fern. All right. Anytime. <laughs> In the sky, we saw stars. No, no flat disk. No, that's why I was trying to spot Alexandria. I wanted to show FCG that it was a fucking circle. Well, I couldn't see it though, because the angle was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was right there. It rotates, put off. It should have. Yeah. You're probably looking right at it. Way for thin. Way for thin. Way for thin. Would you like a planet? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> you require a fine Dorolo provided brunch. <laughs> Imogen, the time has come. Oh, shit. I just wanted you to know that I, I took my final inspiration from. This and I wanted you to have. Oh. I can hand it to her. <laughs> <laughs> this, this horse, your dream, so tormenting you for so oh long. God. Does it move? Why, yes. <laughs> There's a little switch and everything, but don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It only took me like 17 hours to make. <laughs> I believe the horse's name was Flora. It was. Oh gosh, there's there's 415 pieces in there. What material so, is the uh, mane made out of? That's a lot the mane? Mm -hmm. It's a very unique wood. It comes from <laughs> the southernmost part of Exandria territories where there's a stretch to it. Don't pull on it so hard! You can what? also chew on it and it is, is it? edible in, you know, dire circumstances. Oh, oh there is a switch. But no, no bad, no bad. There's, there's a winder. There's a winder. There's a winder. Careful, if you wind it the wrong way, it does explode. <laughs> <laughs> just to keep people from fucking with it, then it doesn't block time. Sorry, I'm very protective. Gonna... I wouldn't recommend it for firearms, but you know, there's a first time for everything. Jenny, this is... The shit? I know. I mean, it's it, it really is. Can you see why it was taking so long? I had to assemble it in small pieces. This took a really long I time. I barely slept I've last been... night. Looks like it travels it's easy, standing. too. Thank so you. Set it off. Let's do it, do it. The tension is killing Does it, does it go? It's just like does rattle it and yeah. just break apart. How do I make it go? If you break it. <laughs> I think, don't you wind it the other way? No, no, it says wind it this way. Keep twisting it to watch No, I'm Travis scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, it's gonna break. Turn on the switch. I thought I did. Does I have a switch? Oh, here, I'll move my hands. <gasps> Oh, oh God! Get your fatty hands. <laughs> Travis, seriously, do I do it? Don't worry, we'll figure it out later. Okay. <laughs> the tension is it immense. It moved once. It did? And then it kind of stopped, and I got a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. I'll catch it if it falls. Oh, my God. Oh, if you introduce a horse in Act 1. Oh, uh, it's a... <laughs> Oh, some <laughs> turning. Some this, turning. Is, this, is so this is the best kind of television. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for our podcast listeners, Laura's winding a horse. <laughs> and there are two five and foot nothing. rubber arms <laughs> grabbing it from and the Literally nothing is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's eyes are looking at the ceiling. <laughs> we think. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'll send the message uh, for right now to Shania Twain. Shania Twain. It's Bell's Hills. If you are awake, we are at the Sun Tree in Whitestone and require transportation to Drusar. Don't reply to this message until. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
I like the first five words being like. <laughs> First and last name, it's Bell Hill. Better <laughs> uh-huh. pick that one up again. I will never Letters. take that spell. Oh. It's too stressful. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll send yep. another yeah, one. Better send another one before well, a portal opens. Does she opens. respond to that? T- tell her in like, we have clocks? exactly. Is there clocks on this There's one? There's a giant <laughs> clock. Okay. You okay. can see it. <laughs> Literally <laughs> in the town. <laughs> I want to focus on communicating the essentials oh, first. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just be like, get us in two Dream. hours. Did you hear my message while you were sleeping? We're Eshteros's friends. Could you open Portal to Sun Tree in exact two hour? Why? Why? why you can why finish the word. Why are you just being common anymore? <laughs> 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 you got 12 more. If you add an S to our Come it's on. still the same. <laughs> <laughs> still won't work. Did you me? <laughs> <laughs> In sleep? <laughs> 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 Do we need to be concerned again? I quickly, I quickly turn him off and turn him on again. Yeah. Look at how many words I have left! Uh-huh. I have left! Uh-huh. I have left! You have words left! Did you hear me in your sleep? <laughs> Wait, you said in sleep. Do you hear me in your sleep? That's an insane. Reply. <laughs> There is a um, shop here that does specialize in various magical accoutrements. It's kind of like a dark burgundy and purple coloration to its paint outside, with a sign that says, Gilmore's Glorious Goods, Whitestone Expansion. Oh, yes! Vixolia kind of knocks on the door. Hello? It's Lady Vixolia Dorolo. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> you hear unlocking noises open up, and you see uh, a young half-elf man, probably in his Mid thirties or so, he kind of looks through, a little sleepy under his eyes. Has a, a purple robe with gold trim on, uh, a little bit of like a like a pointed Van Dyke goatee. Uh, terribly sorry, um, Mister Rollo. Um, well, I was I was just about to open when I stepped in. Is did you need something? Yes, I have some compatriots here who are on the way out and might have need of some of your wares. Uh, it's the man around. Oh no, he's actually he's he's running the Imon uh, original store at the moment. Um, but I can go ahead and take care of them. Come, come on in. Come on in. I'm Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Welcome. Welcome to Gilmore's Glorious Goods. I'm not Gilmore. What, 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 what do you need? <laughs> What's his name? Gilmore. Sean Gilmore. We, I. We've, we've met, met him. him. Yeah. yeah. How is how is oh. the boss? Oh. Ah, uh, and he looks over to Lady Vexalia. Very, very, very busy. He's doing quite a bit of work. I can leave. A, I really don't have anything. <laughs> Your tongue. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I can't kneel, so I'll, uh, I'll kind of just <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, like, lean up on something. Uh, A casual prayer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, change and, <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't know if you can hear me, and I don't know if you can speak. But I'll be listening, and I'll be waiting. I guess I'll be hoping. I guess just let me know that you're there. I guess that's the first step. I, I don't need anything more than that, just to know that someone out there knows who I am, and that I exist. Amen. I'll go out to the five roads converging, and I'll just sit for a second. And I have no idea which road I took to get here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll flip a coin, pick a direction, and go. The good news is, Sun Tree is visible from all points in town. So, <laughs> flip the coin, look at it, look at the Sun Tree, perfect. It's a sign. <laughs> I'm really loud, I'm just going to say, wake up! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <sighs> Still nothing. <laughs> Still nothing. Oh, geez, what are you doing? Come on, man. What the fuck? He's looking at the That's horse when he husband. said that. <laughs> um, nope. Nothing. Nothing. We gotta get in. Nothing from him. How are we gonna get in? We gotta be careful about this. Stop it. 
<laughs> I make my way invisibly to the front door. Okay. But I check the stairs and everything for new traps that may be <laughs> worth there before. Ever. Okay, so the the handful of steps that lead to the front door yeah. of the estate past the front he gate. Was paranoid. Make an investigation check. Come on, postman. It sounded like Not a middle school band. band. Eighteen. <laughs> Eighteen. Doesn't appear to be trapped. <laughs> I'll go up to the front door and, and invisibly just. Additionally, as an action, I can see through my familiar's eyes. Yes. And hear what he hears. Sorry. <laughs> New spell! Yes. No, don't yes. judge me! <laughs> I didn't have a cat! Um. <laughs> Heading into the room, you see a partially damaged bedchamber, still in the darkness, a canopy bed that looks like it has been partially shredded. Check the body for traps. It's a shit show in here, by the way. Everything's been set off, or it looks like it, and the smell of blood is overpowering. It's Eric Sashtaros, face down at the foot of the bed, unmoving. Arm kind of reaching beneath it. And the streak is the streak leading up to where Estros is laying. It is. Is there any chest rise or fall on Estros, even the slightest? You don't notice any, you know? And I'll make my way around it, just okay. looking for. You said his arm is under him, right? His one arm is kind of on the ground, the other is kind of partially hidden under the bed, and it is riddled with wounds. Heavy gash marks, fine slashes, the robe barely held together, ribbons and shredded elements of it kind of dangle at the side. The reason it looks solid is because the color of the maroon robe mingles with the red blood that is now caked, congealed in the places where the flesh would have been exposed. The smell of, of blood is, is strong, but it, it smells off. It's hard to describe. You're very familiar with the blood of creatures, especially humanoid creatures, your own and others. There's just something off about it. The other thing that you do smell is a smell that you won't forget, because it's the smell of blood that you've tasted before. Like a, a sage or an oil combination, but it's distinctly Odahan. I'll look for traps underneath the bed. Roll an investigation check. Uh, it's a natural one. Cool. Okay. Looks fine. Looks totally fine. I pulled the lockbox out. Okay. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you reach and grab it, and as you're pulling it free, it comes off of a plate that you didn't notice that was weighted, and she goes, and as it does, you're like, ah, oh, shit. You feel a heavy impact on your back as something drops from the ceiling above that cracks onto you oh. and partially onto the body. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> Jenny, what? Are you all right? No, I, there is a trap. I missed one. I think I, I think I fucked up Estros. He's a. Uh, is he super dead? He definitely seems dead. I check for a, a pulse against the neck just to be totally sure. Well, now he's dead. I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> he will we'll never know for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's dead. No pulse. Got it. Is the lung so. one? <laughs> Trapped? I don't know. How bad could it be? No way. Natural one. Uh, no! Your lockpicks get kind of stuck, and you worry they're about to snap. And as opposed to pushing further, you just carefully take a moment to pull them out. Slightly bent, whatever contents there seem pretty lightweight. I'll very gently just pat, pat him down, see if there's anything on him. Within his coat pocket, two conjoined key rings. Six different rings of different sizes. Hey, bad day. You tell them I found some rings. I'm gonna try and open this lockbox, but he's, he's definitely dead. I think we should probably get out of here. Yeah, no, he's like totally dead. He's just... Can you keep your voice down? Sorry. Look, I think they Sorry. came in from some other way besides the front door, so either they're still here or there was another point of ingress. About the fourth one you get to when it goes and it opens. And I die. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> It looks to be a cluster of envelopes, sealed letters, kind of looking through them. They all have names on them. One says Evelyn Ress, caretaker. One says Lex Emnor. Another says Chief Wilder Nemenoros. Another says Ajit Dial. Another says Mistress Orlana Shishadri. Another one says Manaya Ture. These are a number of letters, just different names, including one that says Bellatels. Oh, fuck. Uh, I take the letters, I stick them inside my, my harness, and I take the, the Bell's Hells open one, and I, I open it. Oh, I know what's it saying. Oh, shit. Oh, it's thick. It's an invoice. <laughs> 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 we owe him 
Eight hundred dollars for air conditioning? My <laughs> friends, okay. if indeed you have this letter in your hands, then my fate is finally caught up to me. I have done many violent things in my life, some I am proud of and some I still deeply regret. I've already been running long, uh, long running on stolen time. I feel the looming specter of recompense with every morning and since our paths have intertwined, I chose to stare down directly without lament. I can assure you that I embraced my end with a plum and left a mark on my foe they will never forget. In our comparatively brief time together, you have brought a light and shine. Blah, blah, blah. God, he's fucking purple prose. <laughs> the world so continuously ruled by him. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, been lucky enough, sure. You and the late Bertrand Bell were the latest of these deeply appreciated encounters. Oh, he enjoyed our time with us. With every step, I worried you had all stepped into matters far beyond your ability, foolishly marching into oblivion like I once had been. Well, I mean, I wouldn't call it foolish. I now know I was wrong. Those that twist the roads of history to their own dark ends want us to believe we can do nothing. They have no power in the face of such ancient, terrible machinations. I know they are wrong. True bravery is to stand in the face of fear and doubt and march ever on. True bravery inspires others to fall in line behind you and defy their illusions. You inspired me to fall in yours, and for that I thank you. I've many debts to settle and gifts to disperse now that my days close. Whatever sunset I may have been running from for so long, I look forward to seeing Elia once more. Damn. I look forward to watching you all do great things from whatever realm calls me to rest. Remember, not, remember me not just as a warrior, but as a friend. A friend in my own awkward way. Thank you. Now go stop this weird moon shit. Is that what it says? Eric's. My maple ginger cookie recipe. Oh, no. That's the worst. I'll that shit right now. Do what? not, do, do not, not do, do that, that, Travis Willingham. You cannot. I bet you're that is like not that. acceptable. Take out a torch. So I can read the letter better. <laughs> <laughs> to the very, the variant coin stores of Duman on behalf of Lord Eric Sesteros, heir to the Prudage fortune and business. Did I say that right? In the eventual event of my demise, I leave to the members of the band known as Bell's Hells, Ashton, Laudna, Orem, Imogen, Timolt, Fern, Calloway, Letters, and that odd older gnome fellow, you fucking <laughs> my trusted weapon, Turmoil and the ownership of the skyship, the Silver Sun. Oh my God! Calm down, he's I mean, dead. I mean, I'm sorry, he's dead. He will also, I will, I will also <laughs> will upon the crew of the Silver Sun under the guidance of Captain Dilute, uh, uh, Zandis, a sum of one year's worth of payment for their services under Bell's Hells for as, as long in accordance to our previously agreed upon wage contract, all executed responsibilities to Chetney Pocopi, including all mice. I made it that last time. <laughs> the weird, the weird thing is, you, you read it to yourself that way. Which yeah, is weirder. none of us I up heard it. Shut up! There's a will, and he left a bunch of letters to people. I gotta get out of here. I'm coming back out the way I came. He's coming with a will. He's, He's gonna tell him to bring the body the so we can resurrect him. Right about the, bo the body? The body? <laughs> <laughs> I will go back to the walking stick. I'll pick up the walking stick. And by holding it, it becomes invisible along with me. He when he, when Chetney showed up invisible, was there blood on the cane? There is a faint bit of blood on the cane. Yeah. Does the smell okay. that you said it smelled off? Does anything ring as familiar to Orem? It is a familiar smell, and as the sense of smell is one of the strongest memory-linked senses, you recall briefly the trauma of asking for help when you heard whatever toxin these assassins brought somehow seemed to lock away. Any chance of recovery? Now I'm not cheerful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we'll go ahead and finish up. Okay. Oh, so glad this episode's over. <laughs> <laughs> Just to put those arms away. Why? 